100 years of flying, but uh, can we continue with all the focus on climate change and emissions? That's today's topic, the future of flying. I'm in Guayaquil, Ecuador, to be home in Stockholm in the morning and then um, have dinner the same day on the other side of the planet. It always amazes me. But it's also a growing concern because of emissions from flying. Now, whenever you talk to someone from the airline industry, they'll be keen to tell you that it only accounts for about 3% of global emissions. And also they are investing heavily into new green technology, fuel efficient aircrafts and so on. But on the other hand, in any given year, only 3% of the world population is flying. And um, the ATA expect the number of passengers to double the coming 20 years. So no matter how much new green technology, the net result will be increased emissions anyway. Now, the future of aviation is a big topic, so much more than just sustainability. We could be um, focusing on uh, commercial space flights. But uh, for now, let's stay below 36,000 feet and focus on the uh, impact on the environment. So there are already changes in attitudes. Um, in Sweden, we even have a word for it, flygskam. It um, refers to the feeling of being embarrassed and ashamed of boarding a flight because of the negative impact on the environment. So in one end, a global growing middle class striving for a first flight ever. And in the other end, the wealthy flyers who uh, start to think twice about boarding again. Um, corporate cultures, corporate policies where uh, uh, they put limitations on, on flying or incentivize uh, the employees not to fly so much or even uh, ban it. So um, where are we going? Eres perfecta mujer, de la cabeza a los pies. In just 100 years, we have gone from learning to fly, to fly faster, to fly further, to fly bigger, and next, we will need to learn how to fly smarter. And there are innovations like ultralight materials, autonomous devices for unmanned aircrafts, and this here is the all-electric commuter, the Aviation Alice. This one will be on the market in the next two to five years, and they currently have a backlog of more than 150 orders for planes. Just like with cars, electrification is cleaner and cheaper, so we might very well be in for a new age of aviation. But in many decades to come, battery-powered planes will only work for short distances, like one-hour flights, and Alice here is a nine-seater, so we probably shouldn't think of this as replacement for traditional jets. Those 150 orders of Alice can be compared to the current volume of global air traffic, with more than 100,000 takeoffs every day all year round. Airplanes carry over 10 million passengers plus 18 billion dollars worth of goods on any given day. And the most recent estimates suggest that demand for air transport will increase by an average of more than 4% annually over the coming 20 years. And 82% of the world population have never even been on a plane. And the value of plane orders for the, for the coming 30 years is 3 trillion dollars. So don't expect the end of flying any day soon. In my mind, traveling and uh, meeting with people cross borders is um, necessary, probably more important than ever in this era of protectionism and nationalism. And flying is one of the few things we do that we can substitute, like the way we consume or what we eat, what the car we drive, things like that. But hey, that's me. Um, I'm a traveler. I can't imagine life without traveling. If, uh, if I would have been born before airplanes, I would probably have been one of those sailors that went to places like this to, uh, to find the new world. Um, but what about you? What, what do you think about flying? Please share your thoughts in the comments down below. And like always, if you want more, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the future.